Now we are back and it's been crossfire with Dakwa Anishoma. We have TJ Andrews, uh, an economist and a financial analyst in the studio. And we've been talking about how to recover the Nigerian economy. Now, um, Tunji, Nigeria is a blessed country. We say that to ourselves. In fact, we all know. Like, yesterday, we're talking on Crossfire. We're talking about resource curse. It looks mm -hmm. like, you know, Nigeria is actually suffering or is being hit very seriously by the thesis, resource cause. Uh, you know, because I don't know where you can find a nation that is so blessed with all kind of resources. And then we still find ourselves in this situation where we are right now. Since 1960, we've been struggling by successive governments. We've been having issues on how to really make the Nigerian economy compete favorably, you know, with that of other, you know, great nations, you know, in the world. Now, the desired economic growth that you, myself, and a lot of Nigerians are looking forward to, I still want to know exactly what the challenges have been. Let's talk about maybe in recent past or in immediate past or in recent times. What exactly are the challenges that the Nigerian economy have really encountered to have you know, to have really, really, you know, um, be, be experiencing this type of setback. And that cuts across almost all the sector. The agri sector, the power sector, the, I mean, the transportation sector, and, and, and you know, almost all the Nigerian, you know, um, even the banking sector have had to get some form of uh, subvention or intervention, as it were, at a point in time, to be stable to the extent to which we have them now. It's, it's a complete shame that Nigeria is where it is today in terms of the fact that, um, yes, like you said, we have so much in terms of resources, yet we're still struggling in, as an economy. We're still struggling as a country. Um, but you see, that is, I think it's, it's, it's the biggest problem because when there's resources to tap and they look, uh, they look uh, infinite, it, it, it's, it's easy for anyone to aspire to leadership roles, even though he doesn't have what it takes to be there. To be there. So for instance, um, today, if you were called to be the uh, prime minister of Greece, you will think twice. <laughs> Very true. Because you see the problems there. The loss there. You problem. know that you don't have crude oil. <laughs> you know that you, you know you have IMF on your door. So you know you need to be going to that office with something to offer the economy. Um, Nigeria, we've had a situation whereby any, any half with could be our president and still lead us for, for a long for time. Only God knows how long. Because he doesn't really have to think too much. You just have to come up with headlines like this, we're going to diversify the economy. No, 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 it sounds no, nice. No. It <laughs> sounds really uh, very you, nice to the so ears. You but don't think the problem is because we have put so much control at the center in the terms that the center controls it all. So we're not that allowing... Is a, that, is, that is a fantastic... We're not allowing the region to think outside thought. the box. I saw, I saw a, a, a write-up a, a write by uh, Professor Chukuma Soludo on decentralizing the Nigerian economy in two sectors. Mm -hmm. And um, he talked the six regional uh, um, yeah operating the uh, regional the um, regional zones in a situation whereby each zone controls its resources and then a part of it is it a, a, a small chunk of it is sent, to, sent the to the center. Now what that does usually is that it helps everybody think. The resource you have rich to be areas very dynamic. exactly the resource rich areas thinks in terms of how to maximize its own resources. Mm -hmm. And then the resource not so rich areas thinks of how, what can we do? So you look at a Singapore, for instance, today. Now, Singapore, as of when they started, had only two resources, the land, which was not very good, <laughs> and, the, uh, and the human beings <laughs> on it. They don't have proper sources of water. They recycle sewage water to drink. To drink. So it, I mean, the, the, those are things that show you that you can it, when you're pushing Build the wall, something from nothing. exactly. So when when you look at areas of Nigeria which do not have as many resources as some other areas, there are still things that can be produced that from can there. Be produced. So there are minerals, uh, solid minerals that can come from those areas. They are the, they're the human resource because one of the largest things we have, one of the greatest things we have in Nigeria, is the human resource. Now in America, at some particular time, I I, I I don't know of recently, but there was a time in America you called your call center in America. I'm talking about in America, you call your call center and it's rerouted to India. 
Exactly. Exactly. And the you person don't... talking to you is from India. Mm. And you don't know. Because India realized they had a lot of people, so they said exporting services to America and, and, and the rest of the world. Mm. It was cheaper because the people in America will want to collect some exorbitant rates. Okay. The person in India will take like a, a third a of that. Has, and it will, be, yeah, it will, and be, it will provide solutions online. I'm telling you, it will be very you fantastic yeah. with it. So those are the things we can start thinking of as an economy. But like I said, if when, you, when they have any negative implication financially, no, if we no. do this regionalization, it's a form of empowerment. It, it, it's any, then, any conflict. First of all, first of all, I do not believe that there are, I do not believe that there are some states that should be states. <laughs> I don't believe there are some states that should not be states. They should just be so scrapped. They should be efficient. Um, I'm telling you. But some people have been clamoring for more state creation. Especially with the last. Um, <laughs> are you kidding? We, we, we just bailed out states. Please, we want Ijebu State. <laughs> and we still want. We, I mean, we for want Ijebu State. What reason? Why exactly? It's the question we need to ask. Do, why do we want more states? Okay, the why idea the ones is that such we have that, are not viable. No, this, the idea is such that if you, if you have a state that is really very big, Mm -hmm. And the government find it difficult to, to make development happen. And that's because, one, it is slow. Don't forget that naturally development is slow in Nigeria. We still haven't gotten our old networks, you know, um, well. And so if you break it into smaller fractions, you have the possibility of, you know, development eventually, you know, coming from, from the south and from the east and probably meeting in the middle. Personally, and, I, yeah. think, I think a state like Ogu State should be merged with Lagos. I think that is an economically viable idea because Lagos is getting congested. It mm -hmm. needs more land. It's and an Augustine economic has so much land, land and it doesn't have developing. much of economic activity. Why merge both of them? They no, solve, it's already they merged. Solve one problem. Tuji is already merged. <laughs> if you are, once, you, once you're living beyond Ojojubaga, <laughs> you're already in a good state anyway. <laughs> Opik is a good state. I know people who come there to VI to work every day. Do you get what I mean? Um, you see what I mean? Is in Why don't state? merge those two states? Because uh, exactly. It's, it's, it makes economic sense. Lagos is, Lagos GDP-wise, is richer than the entire West Africa if you remove Nigeria. Lagos as a hub is more is bigger than every West African country. Okay, so don't, don't let those go no, there now. That's already fixed. Let me ask this, but that, if we do not operate the, re, the regional zones, can we still practice this with the states in yes, the regional states? I personally think that this competition amongst governors should end. I mean, for instance, I think it should continue. No, to no, no, no. I think it should. Uh, end. I talked about this look at too this, much. Look, to, look at to, this. To look at this. Ekiti, for instance, Ekiti has massive land. Yes, it's a, it's an agricultural hub. Lagos has no business farming. Lagos, but the constitution says that I mean you cannot tap the resources. It's no, only no, the no, federal no, no. I'm government. Saying, no, I'm saying agriculture. Come together. I mean, I'm saying Lagos needs food that Ekiti that can, Ekiti can grow. Yeah. So yes. they could come together. Lagos could produce the money for Ekiti to to to, 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 grow. to grow the agriculture, and Ekiti funds uh, uh, fills Lagos market Pays back with food. It's, yes, I mean it's. It's thinking. There's so much that can be done. Thinking, just thinking. I mean, it's not. Now it's let's not... quick. Uh, I mean, Tuji, let's quickly talk about you know the wide gap between the haves and the have-nots mm -hmm. in Nigeria. It's a very major concern to a lot of Nigerians. I mean, we have the rich getting richer, and we have the poor getting poorer, and that is because I mean there is no the middle class mm -hmm. is completely you know removed or taken out. Yeah. Exactly, it's non-existent now. The point is that, do you think the Buhari administration have the capacity to restore you know, the, middle, the middle class? Talk about development and bathing a lot of you know, small, medium enterprise you know, to occupy that particular position. If the government provides the infrastructures that we need, small businesses will spring up and they will grow. Mm -hmm. And then you can have more taxes you know, because you have already done your part. And so you expect that when these businesses start to grow, I mean, definitely it will eventually bring in more money to the government. And eventually it will add up to, you know, a better GDP for the country. I totally agree with you. Um, but I'm, I'm a bit worried. Okay. I'll explain why. Um, the Buhari administration came in off the back of a strong anti-corruption rhetoric, which is a fantastic idea. Okay. Don't get me wrong. It's a fantastic idea. I really love the idea. But I also do hope that Nigerians understand the makeup of their nation. Mm. The makeup of their nation. The makeup of Nigeria. Yes. Mm. Um, 
Nigeria, this is fact now. This is, this is not just me talking. This is you, fact. You supported that word with evidence. There is a corruption index, okay. a global corruption index. It tracks Nigeria's corruption index. So there are years it goes high, there are years it falls. Now, if you look at that index and you put it side by side Nigeria's GDP, you realize that the years that the corruption index rises high, Nigeria's GDP also rises right mm -hmm. along with it. And when it falls, Nigeria's GDP falls right no, along no, with no. it. Oh, now, so please, please. corruption explain. makes our economy explain. to grow. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. <laughs> please explain. Right. Let me explain. Yeah. There are very few areas in the Nigerian economy that is excluded from corruption. I'll explain. What areas? Banking, for instance. You seen there no corruption it's in the very, banking very sector. High. The banking itself might be free of might be not like this. I said might. might. I'm not exactly saying it is. Yes. Might be free of corruption. But the money that comes through it. Corruption proceeds. It might not be corruption process, but it has <laughs> it's tainted with corruption somehow. Now yes. Um, yes. for instance, you have so many sectors in Nigeria that corrupt fees are institutionalized. If you don't pay, you get delayed. Uh, no, let's start from the MDAs. No. Let's start from the MDAs, TJ. <laughs> TJ, let's start I, from I, the MDAs. I, I no, to, I, I get where TJ is going. No. Let's start from the MDAs. That's no. where it all because, emanates because from. Because if you're saying corruption grows our GDP, let's look at no, the bailout. No, do you want me to prove it to you? Do you want me to prove it to you? Yes, that's where it all emanates from. These states not pay the workers' salaries. Okay, that's so what I'm going to prove it to you. How, you to prove it you Let me prove it to you now. No, to you, before you go on, let's take this GDP. call from Gabriel. Okay. Gabriel, good morning. <laughs> Hello, Gabriel. Gabriel, I think, um, please call, call us back. Nigeria's second quarter GDP is, uh, was 2.89. That's a 10 year low a 10-year low off the back of an anti-corruption rhetoric. So the president comes in and is speaking about the fact that I'm against corruption, which is good. So a lot of business activity has grinded to a halt exactly. because people are not sure where they are supposed to invest in. They are, uh, I used to do it this way. Yes. I need to stop doing it that way. Because ask any business the person. The vessels stop betting. Ask any business exactly. person. Oh, How many business people can come out and totally say they are clean? I'm not saying that there are bad people in Nigeria. I'm just saying that, okay, for instance, look at the um, uh, uh, Virgin Nigeria example. Exactly. That is... Jim Ibrahim. Uh, no, no, I'm talking about... Uh, 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 Richard Branson. Richard Branson. Okay. Successful businessman okay. globally came to Nigeria, failed. He failed I mean, because Virgin Atlantic, I, I, I hold on, hold on, to the because, Virgin Atlantic is still day, fine. This Virgin, but Virgin about, Nigeria died. He's only favoring the few, I'm but the bulk of the is, masses I'm not saying it's this is a good us. thing. I'm not saying it's a good thing. Don't get, don't get to the wrong. I'm saying, saying understand yes. the makeup of your economy. If we're going to kill corruption, it is going to slow us down considerably. Yes. Economically. Are, are we ready? Yes. Let's understand that if we want that real change, we're going to have to take this pain for a while. It's going business to slow us to down. Because now we're I going mean, to relearn how to do business. Yeah, exactly. That's what Proper it means. Business. Yes. Yes, we're going to relearn it. All we've been doing is... You know, cut corners Shady here and there. Exactly. Take, exactly. So now cut we're going to relearn how to do business. But isn't that a good thing? It is. I'm just explaining that. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you something that, that you know, that, that, that uh, I mean, a friend of mine told me has been happening. When you want to buy, let's assume that I'm a, I'm a small contractor. I think we have a call. And, and I have an LPO to bring some things from the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the way we have been doing business, I don't want to say corruption. I'm saying the way business <laughs> is being done. Actually. No, I said the way business is being done in Nigeria. You will, if I buy it for $5,000, because I don't want to pay, mm -hmm. you know, the amount to be able to clear it properly here, uh -huh. I will put an invoice of $500 inside it. That's the amount I'm uh -huh. going to declare. Corruption. Let's take this call from Vincent. <laughs> Vincent, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Cool to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Great. Yeah. Go ahead and yeah. make your contribution. Good quickly. morning. Thank Turn down the volume of your TV set, please. Uh, the volume of my TV set is low. Okay, okay. so contribute then. Yeah, okay. Um, Though we can the, still hear your TV set. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, are you, can you hear me very well now? Okay. Uh, my contribution is this. If you want to revamp the uh, Nigerian uh, economy through that diversification, we have to, like what the president said, that he is going to focus, the 2016 budget should focus mainly on mining and the other sectors. I feel, I feel that it is a good idea because these sectors are yet to be tasked. We are yet to get serious investors to tap into these areas. Like mining, we have, we have uh, so many mineral resources in Nigeria, but the attention is mainly on petroleum resources. Mm. We are not talking about solid minerals, which we have in abundance in Nigeria. If we can invest on solid minerals, we are going to achieve optimal production and the, the economy we do see. When we talk about GDP, always we talk about what is GDP? GDP is gross domestic product. Mm -hmm. what what about the net, uh, what do you call it, net domestic product, which is the real profit we are making? We can say that our GDP is 500 at 6,000 and so on and so forth. But that, does that translate to a net national product, which means the real income of the masses? Mind you, we are not making headway if we continue to rely on petroleum. Okay. And when we talk about taxes, people are paying taxes. A woman selling orange in the street will be, will be charged 100 naira levy every morning. <laughs> uh, uh, the motorist will be charged 200 naira or 500 naira every, 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 every uh, trip. By the end of the day, the, mo the motorist has paid off to 2,000 to 3,000 naira a day to the government coffers. By the end of the year, he will now still declare, maybe he will now declare his return, and he will, be, he will, he will pay another tax. Maybe he is paying 3,000 naira a day. Calculate it. Okay. How, how much is he paying in a year? He's paying not less than 108,000 naira. Even more than has he is, Has he not paid his taxes? Or do you want to, do you want to cut this man's truth? Or do you want to cut off his head to know that he's paying taxes? We are paying taxes in Nigeria. The issue is that it is not properly used. Okay. And we are we are not focusing on those areas where investors from other countries will come and invest. Therefore, let us diversify diversify our economy by tapping into solid minerals. We have called it a the yes. coal in Enugu once gave us source of income, but now the place is comatose. We have a Yokuta State Company, which is, uh, what do I call it? It is, it is, it is, it is like uh, a gully, which cannot be filled. It has been there. Okay, All right, Vincent. Vincent, we have to go now. Beautiful points. Thank I mean. you very <laughs> much for points. your points. I mean, if we leave you, I mean, you just... Yeah, he, exactly. He, he addressed the, uh, some of the things you talked about. As we All right, let's take uh, Bala quickly from Niger. Bala, good morning. Oh, good morning, sir. Hi, good, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you on Crossfire good, this good, morning. Good morning, everyone. I want to actually uh, commend you people. You're actually doing a very wonderful and fantastic job. Thank you job very much, there. Bala. Yeah, my contribution this morning on your actual topic... Oh, my. Please call us back. Bala, you need to call us back. Please. But before then, let's quickly go on a short break. Where we'll come back, we'll still be talking about how to recover the Nigerian economy, you know, from the very poor state it's been in recent times. We'll be right back. All right, let's quickly listen to this before we continue. From the significant drop in the price of crude oil, which has led to a significant reduction in the country's income, to growing security concerns and terrorism, weakening institutions, high cost of business, increasing number of out-of-school children as a result of the activities of Boko Haram sect, 
pallid infrastructures across the country, depleting external reserves and excess crude account, exchange rate challenges, among others. Most Nigerians argue that the country still has a long way to achieve an economic prosperity. Now, over the years, moves by policymakers to diversify the economy from, from its mono uh, product structure, reduce the de dependence on oil, improve the country's level of productivity, and address other structural imbalances um, have not achieved the desired results. Now, Tunji kept on saying that the Nigerian economy is diversified. But we're not seeing the resultant effect yet on the economy. No, it, it's because there's a mono product structure to the diversification, because focus is actually on oil, on the oil sector. So the, um, all the other sectors that are thriving are downplayed, and that's because the players are operating at that level. But, How come? But this, Check the but second this story. Give, but this new explanation now gives credence to what the president said. Now, let me, let, let, let me shock you. Let me shock you. So you see Check the, the second story. Right we, 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 we didn't take it. Dangote amongst the world's 50 most influential person. All of us know Dangote, and we know what he's been into. Sugar, vegetable oil, salt, um, cement. cement, and all of those things. And, and, and the president of the, the of, you know, Dangote has been named among the 50 world influential personalities by Bloomberg, the United States based news media, with bias for business and financial news reporting. The personality chosen by Bloomberg marketed consisted of CEOs, world leaders, as well as religious leaders. Now, the truth is just that. Some part of the Nigerian economy has been entrusted into the hands of a few Nigerians. Mm. And so it is built, milked, dominated, and, and at the same time, it's not in any way contributing to, to the, to the or total welfare. To the total now, welfare. There, there's, of, something, of, there's something I always try to explain to people. There's a difference between GDP growth and development. Mm. There's, there's an absolute difference. Now, GDP growth is what makes people like Aliko the richest man, because that just shows how much money is circulating in the economy. Now, whether it's in circulating in five people's hands, hands or yes. 50 million people's hands, it doesn't matter. it's a different issue. The fact is that that much money has circulated. What we've not had in Nigeria is development, and that's because we've not had structures that have been able to create um, inclusion. So there's a lot of money going around, but it's not affecting a lot of people. Um, I've been in Abuja for the last uh, two weeks or uh, two months or so, and I, I stop and I sit down and I, I, I tend to look around. Abuja has a lot of money going around mm. compared to Lagos, and it is a, there's a, it's, it's in a few areas. So so you have the My Tower. So if you're not in My Tower, <laughs> you're, you're not, not in Asukuro. Yeah. And, and, and you know you, you, you get to understand <laughs> that. But you see, like we said, it's what creates inclusion. It's for the average man to be able to get better health care is for the average man to be able to get uh, education. And not inclusive economy. You, you, you yeah. get, you, you, to be able to get, uh, for me to go to the bank and get good financial services. Um, for instance, my bank called me recently and says, hi, sir, we notice your ATM card is about to expire. I said, yes. And they said, we would like to give you a platinum card. And I said, why? <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, after the person talked, and I, you know, the thought of my mind is, the reason why you're calling me to tell me about this is because it's Because the, you, don't, you still want me to keep it's, operating it's because, this account. It's, exactly, anyway. it's because yeah. of the, 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 transactions. the transactions on this account. Do you, do you do that to the average person? No, because naturally, the Nigerian economy is built to take care of people that are doing well as against people that are not doing well. That is it. So that is it, it's, that until, is it. it's until we, as a people, start to think of the average man, we will not have development as against uh, uh, just growth. Because we can continue to grow for the next 100 years. But if we do not start thinking of, OK, m m when the average man has a heart attack in his house, can the hospital reach him? Will he die? Obviously mm -hmm. not. He's going to so, die. So until we start thinking about those kind of things, we will and not. And until we place monetary value on the people of Nigeria, then we won't have. It's not just economy. monetary value. We have to.
place the life of the average Nigerian more important than every other thing. Yeah, but if you... If because... You, very true, but if you also place monetary value also, mm -hmm. I mean, the nation would think, okay, if God forbid this individual dies, this, we, lose, we will lose, lose a this, whole lot. So kind of money, yeah. let's do everything we can to make sure he has access to that, that's good health care, everything. That's the way it's that's how anyway. it's a bird. Anyways, but let's talk that's about devaluation. I have an issue when mm -hmm. financial experts like yourself come out to say, we need to devalue the Naira. I, did I say that? I did say that. No, no, I said, I said financial <laughs> experts as a so that means other professionals within yeah, the financial yeah. institution they always talk about I, I do not devaluing. agree. I do not I'm agree against anyway. it because yeah. I, I, I would say sufficiently that devaluation of our Naira has put us at the level we are economically because at the end of the day, those who tend to suffer are the masses. I understand where they are coming I mean, from. So I understand the economist's point of view. A anybody that says Nigeria should devalue understands why he's saying it. And um, can you remember in 2007, there was a global recession. Did, did you feel it? Nigeria did not feel I that did not feel it. That global recession. I was you in the why? UK when Gordon Brown actually why? declared and because said, of the now Naira. No, the UK no, no. Nigeria is had in recession. a massive stockpile in our foreign reserves. So when the re the recession was hitting the entire world, Nigeria was just taking money from its stockpile True. and just fixing the mm -hmm. economy, taking money from the stockpile. But right now, we don't have that kind of money. So if another recession ha ha happens right now, it's going to hit us hard. No, but this devaluation of the Naira has no, no, been I'm trying on to explain for several why, years. That, that, I'm trying that to explain what we're taking the money to do. OK. Now, what, when this kind of issues happen, what happens is that it affects the value of your Naira. Mm -hmm. What we've been majorly using our reserves to do is take care of the economy and defend the value of the naira. And it's dollarized anyway. Those oh, transactions, is to the, those yeah. transactions less have less dollarized. dollarized. Yes. So we have to continue defending the naira. Mm. And we've been defending it for how long? So when you continue to defend, you deplete your foreign reserves. Mm. And they're looking at the foreign reserves and they're seeing that, seeing that it's, it's now around the 30, 000, uh, 30 uh, million Critical level, mark. Yes. So let's we not, let's not let it that. go. So, and what is really affecting it that is going down is the defense of this Naira. So they are thinking, why not just let this thing go? So could it be that this was one of the things that also informed the CBN to say, no more dollar, we do not want a dollarized economy? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, but yes. you see, you can't, you, you can't, that's monetary, uh, that's yes, the monetary that angle. Be, yes, mm -hmm. it I will mean, affect hey, a lot of let's, things. Let's look, everything in this room, maybe except of this table, yeah, and I think <laughs> it's even the table <laughs> itself <laughs> is probably important. Wow. And it was brought in with dollars. And yes. it's, our economy is an import-dependent economy. Everything, your toothpaste, your, your shirt, your, your even underwear, body spray, everything, your car, everything is important. So how can you say you don't want to do, you don't want dollars to function in your economy? It's it's it highly, very difficult. It's highly so unlikely. Until we fix the manufacturing sector, exactly. We'll continue then to have you that. you will continue to have that. Anyway, wow. anyway, it's always fun having today Andrew in the studio where we discuss about the Nigerian economy. Every right thinking Nigerian just want to, is earning power to become valuable and then for us to be able to raise our standard of living. Anyway, this is how far we can go on today's show. Thank you so very much uh, to Thank Yandu. you, so Thank thanks. you, Thank you for having me. I liked it a lot today. <laughs> All right, we'll be back tomorrow morning with another very interesting episode. Do join us and stay out of trouble. God bless you. Not too bad. So, did you like what you just saw? I know you did. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. If you want to see more, just subscribe to our channel right now.